Hello and welcome to VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vungani. Thank you so much for joining us today on the show. On this episode of Red Carpet, we have Christmas Light Show in Abuja, Uzo Aduba's latest film, and a South Sudanese painter using art to promote women's rights. Let's get on with the show. And we begin the show in Nigeria, where people of all walks of life came together to celebrate the holiday in the Abuja Christmas village. The AP has this story. Check it out. Nigerians of all ages came out for the illuminations of the Christmas village in the capital city of Abuja. Attendees like Maureen Faith are glad to have the opportunity to celebrate despite a challenging year with the coronavirus. It is really good to have an Xmas celebration that we can actually come out and celebrate. Like we had a very rough last year, like everybody knows we've had a, we had a very a rough last year so it wasn't really fun. I feel bad for the victims though but at least it feels really good to have a celebration like this. Because I know it's just one year, we've missed just one year but it's been like, as in, it feels like we've missed a lot. Residents enjoyed the festivities which included traditional dancing and an abundance of toys after living through a pandemic-related year of lockdowns, muted holiday activities and silenced celebrations, David Oga, a local artisan, shared his excitement. It's good to be here, to have a breath of fresh air, you know, with the last year pandemic, lockdown, and now we're not having any lockdown. It's a good time to come with the children, just to have fun. And after the exams, it's almost break now Christmas is around the corner so we're just here to have fun and it's a good place to be if you're not here you're missing honestly just come out and have fun among the festivities were carnival attractions local vendors selling jewelry and craft products and a dance show featuring Abuja's Indian and Mexican communities Nigerian-American actress Uzo Aduba, who is famous for her role in Orange is the New Black, has a new project up her sleeve, but this one consists of predominantly a male cast. Let's check out more on her new role in this story from the AP. Uzo Aduba, who shot to fame thanks to her work in female-centric prison comedy Orange is the New Black, is used to being surrounded by women on set. However, in her new film, National Champions, the Emmy Award-winning actor found herself around a team of mostly men. It was the first time I've been a part of so many female ensembles or and or strictly female ensembles for the most part. And uh, this was the first time I'd ever been in something that was a male-dominated ensemble. And I was also curious on my first day of work when I showed up and I was the only woman there, I thought, okay, well, what is this gonna be? You know, I don't know. But those guys were all so, so lovely, so loving and warm and welcoming. The football drama is based around a quarterback named Lomakas James, played by Stefan James, and his teammate Emmett Sande, played by Alexander Ludwig, who start a player strike by declaring they won't play until student athletes get a fair wage. Aduba is no stranger to the world of sports. Before she became a TV star, she ran track and field at Boston University. Her character in National Champions also shares this athletic history. That was in the script <laughs> when I read it. That was uh, in the story, which was like, I was like, is somebody watching my life? You know, like, I don't know, <laughs> kind of a, uh, an experience that was already in the script when I got it. So making it all the more um, intriguing, I guess, to me. National Champions, which also stars Little Rel Howry, Russell Wilson, Kristen Chenoweth, and Timothy Oliphant is out in the U.S. now. And now to South Sudan, where artist Abu Aydang has made a name for herself, painting women and illustrating other themes through her artwork. Abu is also a curator wanting to promote upcoming artists, especially women painters from across the region. Check her out. 
Based in Juba, South Sudan, Abu says she always dreamed of becoming an artist as a child, and so she started painting at a young age. She spoke to Reuters about the one person who supported her dream every step of the way. My father encouraged me to do something more general, like a, a business. Interna so I started, ended up doing international business. But also on the other hand, he's, he's the same person who is always encouraging me to paint. And he's like, this is a talent, but then do what also um, have a cause. So I think what really, the person that encouraged me a lot was him. Like every time he traveled, he came with brushes and paints and things like that. And, and I appreciate that. Abul was born in Ethiopia in 1986, but when war erupted there, she was separated from her mother and traveled to Malakal in South Sudan with her paternal grandmother, who was a big influence on her, which explains why women are a constant theme in her work. I was raised by women, especially growing up, of course, we know the old story of South Sudan, all the men were in the battlefield. And um, so at the time, my father was never with us, you know. It's, 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 it's a subconscious thing, and I've been raised by, by very strong women. Besides showcasing her artwork, Abu hopes to serve as a mentor to upcoming women artists. She also works as director of museums, culture and national heritage in the office of the vice president, gender and youth cluster. Now, during COVID, when all the theaters were closed, two sisters decided to take their musical talents to the only stage available, that is the streets. The rest, as they say, is history. VOA's Anna Nelson reports and Anne Rice narrates her story. I'm Lauren Kidwell. Um, I am 33. Uh, I've been in the city, in New York City, for about five or six years. This is my sister. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hannah Kidwell. Um, I've been in the city for about a year now, and through that year, I've been singing on the street with my big sister, Lauren. <laughs> Professional singers, sisters Lauren and Hannah Kidwell have been raising their voices on New York streets since October 2020. When we came back to the city and we decided to go out and sing, it was supposed to only be something that like, you know, we'll do this until we can find other jobs. We never in a million years thought that it would be as successful as we had, that this could be our only job. For many artists, COVID shut down the theaters where they worked. Singing on the street became the only way for many singers and artists to both earn some money and share art with people. Sisters, sisters, there were never such devoted sisters. We're both professional actors normally, um, and but the the theater you know industry was completely shut down. There was just no work. We just kind of decided to go out there and sing on the street and sing the songs that we love, songs that we both grew up on, which was like songs from the 1920s to the 1960s. The sisters grew up in a Los Angeles suburb in a very tight knit family, and love for music has always been part of who they are. Their father is a musician, and their grandmothers and grandfathers are all opera singers. I've got a house to show place. I got my undergrad degree in directing. I thought I was going to go be a director and direct Broadway shows and, you know, live my career that way. And then um, after I graduated undergrad, someone heard me sing and they're like, no, you need to get back into performance. That's absolutely something you need to do. So I went and I got my master's degree in musical theater from Boston Conservatory. They always dress in beautiful clothes and sing old songs. They say they could just throw on jeans and t-shirts, but that just wouldn't be the same, neither for them nor for their audience. There's something about nostalgia and something about that genre of music and that time period that really just evokes something. It just like it reminds them of a grandparent or like of a time in New York City and being able to share something really special with people. They felt their city, which they loved, was on lockdown and would never breathe again. Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper. Dream 
they may not be singing on Broadway stages yet, but Lauren and Hannah Kidwell have been giving their fellow New Yorkers a gift, the hope that things will get back to normal and their city will shine again, renewed and revived. For Anna Nelson in New York, Anna Rice, VOA News. A Nigerian designer is incorporating artifacts like the famous Benin bronzes into fashion accessories, hoping to promote the country's cultural heritage while making a profit. This is jewelry by Nigerian designer Tosan Ide, who at his shop in Lagos told Reuters each piece of design represents Nigerian tradition and culture. We started to do research into African cultures and the symbols that people used to express these cultures. We started off making sweaters, t-shirts, like a starter pack for uh, most businesses. And the idea just sort of bloomed over time. We really started as a company in 2018. And we continued doing more research when we got back into Nigeria into these cultures and symbols. We got to find out a lot of details and sometimes mistakes that people have or know about their culture and their heritage. Among the jewelry are gold rings depicting Queen Idea Mask, a 16th century queen mother from the kingdom of Benin. Also on display is a ring topped with a jackery sword, a symbol of the Niger Delta's Itakiri people, which is associated with courage and royalty and believed to have magical powers. These are symbols that everyone would see, everyone has seen. Uh, you find it on our tires, you find it on agbadas, you find it on hats. You find it in, in just different outfits. So it's, people might not really be able to speak their languages, but symbols always resonate. And it's something we felt that everyone could resonate with like anywhere around the world, just being of African heritage. Abdul Malik Obaseki is the customer who bought the Arewa and Queen Idea lapel, which represents his northern and southern Nigeria roots. Every piece they make has... It has tradition to it. It's not just wearing pieces, but it's wearing pieces that mean something. Um, I am from Edo. My dad is Edo, and my mom is Hauser, and that's what this is right here. So it's the Edo and Hauser piece. I'm wearing lapels that I like. I am also showing off my heritage, and I like that, so I like them a lot. The small town of Seneca Falls, New York, is celebrating the 75th anniversary of the beloved Christmas movie at its annual It's Wonderful Life Festival. As Aaron Forda reports, many there believe the town was the inspiration for Bedford Falls, home to the enduring main character, George Bailey. The movie is about a man who lives in a small town who never really feels satisfied in his own community, and he doesn't realize how important uh, he is. George Bailey means selflessness. George Bailey means uh, caring. George Bailey means love thy neighbor. I think George Bailey is the best of us. Daddy! Zozo, Zozo, my little ginger snap, how do you feel? It's always relevant. You know, there are times like, you know, right now where we're trying to survive this pandemic and we've had a lot of loss and a lot of stress. And can I identify with George Bailey and the wonderful message at the end where family and friends and everybody in town comes together to, to save him and it's a beautiful message of hope. I think it's a wonderful festival. It is great to see our downtown so busy and with so many out of town visitors and everyone is very happy and glad to be here. And I think during this particular time, the message that the movie brings is more important than ever. And it, you feel that here in town. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. And with that, we come to the end of our show today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. My name is Jackson Vungani. For more entertainment news, remember to check us out at voanews.com. We are also on all social media platforms, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube where you can watch our videos. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And Merry Christmas to all of you. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>